You know, the World Health Organization predicts that less than, in less than 20 years, depression will be the second most widespread illness in the world, behind only HIV AIDS. Uh, even now, in any given year, one in 10 Americans suffers from a mood disorder. It makes you wonder exactly what's happening here and who can help us understand this better than Dr. Andrew Weil. He's written a new book called Spontaneous Happiness, uh, which offers uh, a few ideas. Um, th thanks for joining us again. Uh, you and I have gotten to know each other a bit yep. over the years, and I have to say, when I started reading this book, some of this surprised me, just, just about you, because mm -hmm. this is something you haven't shared, your own struggles with depression. Um, first, first of all, you're, you're doing well now, right? Well, this was some, actually in my 20s, 30s, and 40s, yeah. mostly. And uh, as I've gotten older, it has receded. And I think some of that may have to do with getting older, but I think a lot of it is from lifestyle changes that I've made, and I wanted to share that information. I, I never had major depression. Uh, what, I, what, what was it like for you? You know, that there were many days, periods where more days than not, I would wake up just feeling in a, in a blue mood. I often didn't feel like getting out of bed and doing things. Mm. I would go ruminate about feelings of worthlessness. Mm. And uh, I also found I withheld myself from social interaction when I was in that state, which is probably one of the worst things I could do because scientific research says that social interaction is strongly protective against depression. You have, uh, obviously, people know who you are. They know uh, some of the things you stand for in the mm -hmm. world of medicine and health. What did you do at that time, uh, years ago, for your own depression? I, I tried various forms of psychotherapy, which I didn't think did much for me. Uh, at one point, I filled a prescription for Zoloft and mm -hmm. took it for a few days and stopped because it made me feel terrible. Both It, it made my body feel bad and it numbed my mind. And um, then I decided maybe this is something I just have to live with, that it's <laughs> existential. And I also had a, a sort of feeling that somehow my creativity was linked to these periods. And I've talked about that in the book. You know, There's a striking correlation between... Uh, creativity, uh, artistic success, mm -hmm. literary success, and depression. Um, and there's a very interesting uh, new idea of depression that comes out of evolutionary psychology, uh, suggesting that we may be programmed to be depressed because it's an, a state of inward focus and rumination may be the way we solve problems. So there may be a value in experiencing depression as long as it's not uh, overpowering. Mm -hmm. at, at any rate, as I say, I made a lot of changes in my life, in midlife. Uh, one of them was becoming more physically active. Another was um, taking regular doses of fish oil and mm -hmm. eating oily fish, uh, getting my vitamin D levels to the right level. I do some of these things because of you, myself. Good, now, good, so, yes. good. But then also, I, I became very interested in meditation and some of the techniques of Eastern psychology for managing thoughts because I think for most of us, uh, thoughts are usually the source of sadness, anxiety, fear. And it's a real challenge to know how to do that. One way is by improving attention and doing meditative practice. Well, were you doing this uh, to try and, and stave off your depression or was it something you were learning about simultaneously? I think it was both. And uh, I, I knew that that would be a good thing for me to do. And, and over the years, that practice has been very valuable to me. I, I rarely have, uh, I rarely experience depression today. And even when bad things happen to me or I have to deal with bad situations, I think I bounce back from them pretty quickly. And th that kind of resilience, I think, is something that can be cultivated. You, you um, have been productive your, your, your whole life, seemingly, right. and, and, but this idea that you, you're more creative in these periods where uh, you're, you're blue or you're, you're, you're Not depressed. necessarily in the periods, but coming out of them. It seems like I, I dip into some well and get ideas and thoughts. Huh. I just had a sense that that was so. And then you'd come out with some burst of, of right, productivity. Right, exactly. Medication, and, and your, your views on a lot of medications are, are pretty well known, but for, for people out there who are listening who have serious depression, a serious illness here, right. well, what, do you, what do you tell them? Severe depression is a severe illness, and it needs to be managed professionally, and that management might include the use of medication. Certainly for bipolar disorder, I think medication is critical, and I would never tell anybody to mm. stop that. But there is growing, a growing body of scientific evidence that the SSRIs, the most popular antidepressants, are not that good. Hmm. You know, a lot of data showing that for most cases they work no better than placebos, certainly in mild to moderate depression. And they're not benign. You know, they have toxic effects. The most interesting problem that's recently been cited is that they create their own need. That when you, you know, when you uh, increase serotonin at neural junctions, the body responds very logically by making less serotonin and dropping serotonin receptors. So it then becomes very hard to get off. And right. this is called tardive dysphoria now, yes, the yes. Lingering, lingering depression caused by the drug. So I think 
if people want to use these, it might be a good idea to use them for a limited period and then figure out other things you can do and get off them. Um, it's, it's just, it's always fascinating to speak with you. Um, and I'm glad you're well. Thanks. Congratulations on the book. Good, good to see Take you. Take care of yourself. Don't, don't tour too much. Uh, people <laughs> will buy the book. <laughs>